Piervo. Hello, thank you very much for joining me today. How you doing? Welcome to to this week in Australia. That's right. We're all the way from up top here in Indiana. I'm going down under. I'm using the internet tubes to see what happened in Australia this week. Let's do it. Okay, top post of the entire week. Bunnings error page. I had a laugh when I saw it. And we have some kind of, I don't know if you call that a hot dog. Some kind of dog that's probably hot. Wrapped in a sliced piece of bread. Seems like some kind of sin. I don't know. I don't really like hot dogs anyway, so I'll give it a pass. I would not eat it. Sorry, we hit a snag. We are currently experiencing technical issues. We hope to be back with you shortly. Please try refreshing the page. Okay. Why is this the top post of the week? Just because it's... I need to read the comments. This is most definitely the best thing about the Bunnings website. Dear Bunnings, if you need someone to sort your website up, hit me up. Okay. Where's the onion? Hiding away under the snag, making the bread fall apart. <laughs> oh, wait. He's calling this hot dog a snag. Because he said under the snag. So that's why it's funny, because it's like a play on words. Why do you call a hot dog a snag? Is that even a hot dog? The next highest post is this one. Teenage boys are being bombarded with misogynist content online. It's making its way into the classroom, which I'm pretty sure this is like deja vu. I feel like I saw this exact same news article months ago. Maybe. Um, one teacher says, I've been told to F off, B. I've been told to shut up, B. Imagine standing in front of a class full of high school students and having that kind of abuse hurled at you. And they're attributing it to Andrew Tate. Isn't it crazy how just one dude, like, getting popular has led to such a change in culture and society in the, all the way in Australia, too. That's wild, huh? Pretty disturbing. Can a local police tell me if this is a joke? <laughs> what is this supposed to give you the sensation of walking on grass? Why don't you just walk on grass? I don't think this would give the same sensation. I think that would just tickle your feet. <laughs> or be really uncomfortable, get between your toes and poke you and stuff. Who the hell would buy that? They're comfortable as F and will work your way through you in a few years as microplastic. F yeah, they're comfy. I had a pair for like two years till they gave up the ghost. It's sad when they lose their sponginess and feel like a normal pair of pluggers. <laughs> After a year, my only issue with them was finding them on green grass. So they actually are comfortable? People aren't joking? I lost a pair camping ones. How many people buy these shoes? These are all the rage in Australia, apparently. I always check I haven't left anything behind, but the little bastards hid pretty well, as it turns out. I bought new ones. <laughs> apparently, I was wrong. These things are incredible. I need to get my hands on a pair of these suckers. <clears throat> I know y'all love to walk around barefoot. Well, now you don't have to. You can wear flip-flops that make you feel like you're walking around barefoot. I had to read this title like three times to even understand it. Over half of Aussies are keen on child-free flights. We don't use that word keen over here in America, like, at all. But it means you like it, huh? Like, you're for it. Child-free flights. I guess the half of Aussies that don't have children <laughs> are for it. I mean, I don't really have a problem with it. I do have a child, as you can see. This is not my play equipment. But I don't really care, like, you know, if they want to make separate flights that are child-free. Seems a little bit odd to me. I, I think the most odd thing is I've never been on a flight even before having a kid and really cared that there was, like, a crying baby. I guess it's a little bit 
annoying. Actually, I've never, I've never cared. I can't think of a single time I've ever been like, oh my God, I need off this flight. Like I just need a child free flight. This is horrible. Um, although one little punk was kicking the back of my seat. You know what? Maybe child free flights is where it's at. I've flown an effing lot. It's not the crying babies that are my biggest bug bears. <laughs> bug bears. I like that. Kids wise, the most annoying kid ever was about 10. Yeah. Oh my God. If you have an untrained 10 year old, <laughs> I speak about kids like they're animals because they are. Um, if you have an untrained 10 year old just going batshit crazy, that is. That is a thing to behold. Um, but it can also be very entertaining, you know, if you just change your mindset. You know, just give up watching your your movie or whatever and just watch what's going on in front of you. You might just be entertained. Otherwise, it's effing adults every time. Yeah. Adults can be pretty freaking rude and annoying too. Adult free flights. That's what we need. These debates are ridiculous and designed to distract from the fact that none of the major Australian airlines are actually able to deliver on the product they have sold the consumer. Oh, damn! Focus on getting flights to run on time and avoid cancellations before moving on to this rubbish. Ooh, and how about the food? Well, actually, I don't know. How is the food on Qantas? I don't know, but it sucks over here on American Airlines. The food sucks. Thanks, as far as junk mail goes, this one's actually pretty useful. <laughs> I see he snipped off the ad at the bottom. LJ Hooker. Kumura. I wonder what this dude does. Well, he blurred him out. But we've got cooking conversions. Oh, wow. Look, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. <coughs> Imperial to metric. Wow. Now you guys can read all of our secret American recipes and convert them. You're able to make Kentucky Fried Chicken all the way down in Australia now with this guide. <laughs> um, pretty cool. I like it. I mean, I would probably still use my phone, but that's cool. I do like the idea of providing something of value in junk mail. You know, anytime you're trying to distribute an ad, I think, you know, something that's actually might be used. Good idea. <laughs> Can someone tell me why the sudden hype with these cups being sold everywhere? <laughs> is this just now hitting Australia? That's kind of fascinating if it is. Or maybe this person's a boomer and is just now noticing it. <laughs> I don't know, but these have been popular well, so the original, there's always a popular cup as of the last, like, decade, I think, over here in America. The kids, the girls in middle school, they need to have the cup, the trendy cup. Don't ask me why. There's no point in trying to understand it. You know, this person's asking why. That's, that's a mistake. There's no understanding it. I guess TikTok is the best answer I can give you. Um, but right now, or at least, well, at least a, a couple of years ago, the Stanley Cup was the popular, um, that was the cup you had to have or else you'd be bullied at school. And these look like knockoff Stanley Cups, which I don't know. I don't know if that'll get you bullied or not. I would think that would get you bullied worse, you know what I mean? I mean, back when I was a kid... If you were like knockoff Nike shoes, that would get you bullied more. Um, but for some reason, it seems like the knockoff Stanley Cups are okay, which is good. I'm in favor of that. You know what I mean? Who cares about the brand? Who cares about any of it, to be honest? But uh, definitely don't care about the brand. <laughs> um, but I think we might have moved on to a new cup. I don't know. You'll have to. You'll have to ask TikTok. They were fashionable six months ago in the USA. <laughs> um, 
Honestly, it was more like two years ago. They were fashionable six months ago here, too. I think LP has been under a rock. He's been down under. That's for sure. Okay, what do we got? A billionaire tax would raise $380 billion a year and make our tax systems fairer. Report says. The report said it, everybody. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. But, um... It is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Looking at the growth rates. This is the growth rate going up. You know, not just the growth. This is the rate of growth going up. <laughs> um, of the top global 0.0001%. That ain't me. And that's probably not you. Um, as a percentage of world GDP. Damn. Damn. Holy crap, that's actually messed up. <laughs> that is so messed up. I don't pretend like I know every solution or anything to this type of problem, but holy crap. 0.0001% of the people own 13, 14% of the wealth. What, 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 what? They own like one eighth of the wealth? Point oh 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 one percent of people, one eighth of the wealth. <laughs> but what's crazy is after COVID, that just—I mean, look at that. Twenty twenty, boom. The rich got so much richer in that time period. Pretty fascinating, and it's still happening. It is fascinating. And what do we got here? Effective income tax rates by income groups for billionaires. This is odd, huh? Actually, one of the most interesting things is the American effective tax rate for billionaires is higher than France and the Netherlands. That's kind of interesting to me. Netherlands is almost zero. Damn. But where's Australia? I mean, this is the Australian subreddit after all. What the hell? This is very interesting to look at. I mean, I guess it's saying in the 95th to 99th percentile... They're paying a lot of tax, you know, the highest tax rate. But then when you really zoom in with a microscope at the 99.999 percentile, all of a sudden they're not paying hardly any freaking tax <laughs> anywhere in the world. Oh, my God. It's like the world is controlled by these people. Trickle-down economics is the biggest effing lie pushed by Thatcherites since Thatcher herself pushed it. It amazes me that people still seriously believe it's relevant, or worse, that it works. I always thought the name was funny. To me, it's like the economic version of, you know, let them eat cake. Trickle down ep economics. Yes, we will all, we'll let the people drink our trickle, you know. We'll trickle a little bit out of our giant pool of wealth. Some will trickle over the edges, and the people can... Run around and catch a little trickle. And they should be thankful. <laughs> Commonwealth Bank with a bit of home loan payment relief. Your minimum required payment is reducing. Oh, that's cool. Great news. We've reviewed your variable rate home loan. Uh, do you guys mostly do a variable rate? Most people over here in America do fixed rate mortgages. Um... We're decreasing your minimum fortnightly required repayment amount. You guys pay it every two weeks? Man, there's all, there's all these little interesting little tidbits of fun facts everywhere you look. <laughs> you pay your mortgage every two weeks? There's a few reasons why that might happen. Blah, blah, blah. Your interest rate really reduced. Your new lower payment, I mean, your new... Lower repayment amount means you could have an extra $1 in your pocket every fortnight. <laughs> Don't spend that all at once. Holy crap. $1 every fortnight. <laughs> oh my God. From 374 to 373. Congratulations. I love it when I say the exact same things as the top comments say. Traffic controller question. Queensland. Match the following words with the correct picture. Whoa. <laughs> oh, 
hard hat beacon and forklift. I don't know. I don't know, guys. This could be a hard hat from like the 1900s, maybe, you know, or the 1800s. If you squinted, you might think that's a hard hat. So what age group is this for? Um, Four-year-olds? We had a visitor last night. Oh, my God. Looks like he was printing something. <laughs> I don't like their little hands. Uh, I don't like them. I mean, they're definitely cuter than, than American possums. For sure. <laughs> definitely cuter than that. But I don't, I don't like them. No. <laughs> One bedroom flooded at unlivable shack for only $250,000, folks. On the market. <laughs> On the market right now. Get it while it's hot in South Australia. Six Dry Creek Road. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, I guess you make the argument that the land is what costs a lot of money, but there's not even land there. That's water. <laughs> that creek looks pretty wet to me. I missed that. I missed that. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's kind of an interesting post. I mean, he's just talking about how he got a flat tire last night. He doesn't know how to change a flat tire. And an Aussie bloke looks over and immediately says, need some help, mate? Gets out of his car wearing a pair of thongs, helps me find the jack, puts the spare tire on. No negativity, no remarks about why I don't know how to do it. Just a smile and real kindness. He says, nowadays, straight up kindness like this, kindness like this is very rare back home in the USA but I've been experiencing it constantly over here. That's fascinating. Interesting. Hopefully we're not losing that aspect of our culture over here in America. I feel like and a, that might be a dying art over here. I mean, it definitely depends where you live. Hmm. Hopefully not. Hopefully people are still kind enough to help you change a tire. I definitely could see people being like, you know, like, oh, you know, acting like you're stupid. Some people. Um, yeah, I think it does depend where you live, but that's, that's a feel good post. I'm glad the kindness is alive and well down under. <laughs> Happy to hear he was wearing the appropriate safety footwear. Okay. I've seen enough for this week, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you guys are having a phenomenal weekend. I'll see you next week.